I drove my Tesla Model Y from New York City to Boston on August 23rd, 2021. In this video, I will break down the charging experience, the road trip, the ride quality, the performance of autopilot during a long road trip, and the overnight charging experience in Boston. Hey everyone, I'm Steve Young. On this channel, we help electric vehicle owners with a focus on the New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut area. This means local rebates and tax incentives, performance of local charging networks, and climate because the East Coast has four distinct seasons, and weather affects battery and solar performance. We'll start with the road trip itself because it sets the stage for this entire video. So the trip took about five to five and a half hours. We drove through five states, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. At the start, we had good summer weather. However, as we entered Eastern Connecticut, we began catching up to Hurricane Henry. Please see the card up here for my breakdown of how my Model Y performed in a hurricane with autopilot engaged. Okay, so the stage is set. Let's talk about the charging experience. Okay, let's get right to the point. The charging experience was very good. The majority of our drive was through Connecticut. And as I drove through the state more and more and more, I felt a higher level of confidence that I would be able to find a supercharger easily. Okay, story time. So my original plan was to use a 250 kilowatt charger, but while driving through Connecticut, my little one in the back complained that she had to use the bathroom. So we just kind of had to stop wherever we could. But when that occurred, we had the option to stop, use a bathroom, and charge if we wanted to at a moment's notice. So I think that counts for something. I want to say the charging stop for the 150 kilowatt supercharger that we ended up at was a little bit longer than I wanted to, but it was fine. On the road trip back to NYC, the plan stops went exactly as planned. We did use a 250 kilowatt supercharger and it was amazing. I'll break that down in another video. Honestly speaking, driving through Connecticut, there were so many superchargers at the rest stops. And in fact, I felt like maybe there were too many if there could be such a thing. All right, so on to the ride quality. Let's bang this one out real fast. The ride quality in the Model Y was good very smooth on the entire road trip up to Massachusetts. My entire family of four felt safe and secure the entire ride. So until now, I had never used autopilot on a trip for longer than like 45 to 60 minutes. Now we were driving through five different states for about a six hour long road trip. And I learned a few things. Okay, so let me set the stage for you. Autopilot's performance is an A+. In my opinion, highway driving is where Autopilot absolutely crushes it. It drives better and safer than a human being can. And since the camera sensors are at the top of the windshield, it can see higher and further than a human being can. So it can detect trouble earlier too. Since Autopilot took some of the driving off of my plate, I felt less fatigued too. Now, usually on these long road trips, uh, my wife and I, we have to take turns driving. I tend to get burned out after about two hours of continuous driving. But this time I drove the whole six hour trip entirely alone. My wife didn't have to touch the steering wheel at all. Now, I didn't realize until this trip how many micro decisions we're making all the time while driving. Is this guy paying attention? What is that guy going to do? What's going on down there, etc. Now, during this leg of my trip, autopilot disabled itself two times. Now, why, you ask? 
because on such a long road trip, I did not provide adequate feedback frequently enough. Okay, let me explain. I'll give you the solution first and then explain the problem. So to keep autopilot from disabling itself, in my opinion, the steering wheel is looking for a consistent amount of resistance throughout the trip. So the solution that worked for me is if I keep two fingers at the six o'clock position while autopilot is engaged, it asks for feedback significantly less. Okay, so that's the solution to keep autopilot happy during a long road trip. Now you might ask, what about torquing the steering wheel when the car is on autopilot? <laughs> well, this is what I've been doing so far with my car. As I said earlier, this is the longest road trip I've ever taken with this car and that I learned a lot. The hands-free autopilot experience is really only for short road trips, like an hour or less. After about two hours of hands-free autopilot driving, the system will lock you out. You will have to pull over, put the car in park, and resume driving if you want autopilot back. So finally, we got to our hotel in Boston, and it sat on top of an underground parking garage. At the very bottom of the parking garage, there were four charge point access points. So I'm staying in the hotel anyway, I decided to plug in. I stayed there for 12 hours and 27 minutes plugged in, which put 252 miles back into the car. I paid charge point $20.31 to use this overnight. Now is $21 is $20 and 31 cents expensive? Sorta. Is it cheaper than gas? Absolutely. Uh, was it convenient? Absolutely. So overall, I'm satisfied with the experience. I knew what I was getting myself into. I would have definitely preferred a free like Tesla destination charger or, or something else, but it was fine. It was convenient. I plugged in, got into the elevator, went straight up to my room. Done. Okay, so that's what I learned during my road trip from New York City to Boston in my Tesla Model Y. I hope that helped you prepare for your own road trip in some way. If it did, please consider hitting the like button or subscribing to the channel. The next video will be about the second leg of my road trip from Boston to Portland, Maine. My name is Steve Young, and thank you so much for watching.